name's Annette and welcome to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm sewing Lysianthus and I thought I'd bring you along in case that's something that you would be interested in. Um, Lysianthus uh, have a reputation for being quite difficult, but don't let this put you off. They actually aren't that difficult to look after. Um, you have to mollycoddle them a little bit more than maybe you would some snaps or something like that. But actually, Lysianthus are such wonderful flowers because they have this incredible vase life. And a lot of people describe them as, you know, roses without thorns. Uh, the Latin name for them is Eustoma, which I think is an incredibly unattractive name for something that is so beautiful. There are so many different varieties of Lysianthus as well and you can get Lysianthus that will flower slightly earlier than others so even if you sow them at the same time they may be like two weeks apart so if you're looking for like successions maybe if you're picking flowers for bouquets or something like that actually it's quite good to be able to choose different varieties and also within those varieties you get um, some that are larger flowered and some that are smaller flowered and the stem lengths will vary so some can be up to a meter tall and some might only be 70 centimeters tall but they all have their own individual characteristics like you know ruffle leaf feathers or particular colors that maybe you can't get anywhere else. What I'm going to do today is take you through the different varieties that I'm sewing and then I'm going to afterwards show you how I'm sewing them and describe you know the best practices for getting your seeds to germinate. So if you want to skip forward to that I'll put a timestamp up on the screen so you can go forward to how to sew Lysianthus. So with the varieties that I'm sewing today what I'm going to do is put a picture up on the screen with some details about them so that you can see what they look like and maybe you know that will give you some ideas about which varieties you'd like to sew either this year if you get cracking or in future seasons. So I'm going to start with the Corellis that I'm sowing today and the Corellis are like a main season crop so they're not early or late they'll kind of take you through and they've got like a really good stem length and they've got these um, fully double lightly ruffled petals. So I'm sewing peach which is this gorgeous peachy apricot colour. I'm sewing deep pink which is just as it's described it's a lovely deep pink rosy kind of color and then I'm sewing rose which is similar to deep pink and I'm not actually sure what the differences are between these two because um, it's hard to compare them so what I'm going to do is sew them next to each other so that we can compare the colors and decide whether we pre prefer rose or deep pink but you know on the screens and if you haven't sewn them before the colors look very similar and then I'm also sewing Corelli light pink which is this gorgeous pale blushy pink colour. And then I'm sewing um, from the Arena series. This is a later flowering series and they've got lovely double flowers that are about, they can be up to eight centimetres in diameter, so about three inches. So I'm sewing baby pink, which is just as it's described, this gorgeous soft pink colour. And then champagne, which is like a creamy pink colour. And I haven't sewn champagne before, so it'll be interesting to see how that compares to all the others. And then I'm sewing gold, which is this gorgeous, rich, buttercreamy colour, and red, which is a lovely, vivid red. But it sounds like the flowers on the red are maybe slightly smaller, only six centimetres, so um, about just over two inches. Um, I'm not sure, so we'll have to compare those. So I'm sewing one from the Chroma series, which is called Silky White, and this is a later blooming one too. It's uh, fully double, and the Chroma series, I think, have more of a branching habit. And then I'm sewing one from the Advantage series, and Advantage apparently are good because they're good in higher temperatures um, for longer days. They're like fully double, mid to late um, Lysianthus. One from the Advantage series called Cherry Sorbet, and it's like a darker rose pink, more on the red side, then the pink side, which is, I guess, why it's called Cherry Sorbet. And I'm saying one from the Dublini series, and this one is just the white. And these have got, like, adorable miniature blooms. And the white is a really pure white uh, with flower size um, about two to three centimetres or one to one and a half inches. And then I'm saying two from the Voyage series. Um, Voyage series has loads of ruffled layers and it's earlier to flower than others. So I'm sewing First Love which has white petals with lovely soft blushy pink edges 
And from the Voyage series, I'm also sewing White Improved, which is a wonderful ivory white. And then I'm also sewing two from the Piccolo series. These are single flowered with really strong stems. And they're kind of like the traditional ones that maybe you would find in, you know, grocery stores. So I'm sewing Northern Lights, which is creamy green with a purple edge. Can't wait to see that. And then Hot Lips which is white with this really deep rosy pink edge. And then last but not least, I'm sewing two from the Roseanne series. And the Roseanne series are, they come in unique colors. I think there aren't that many in the Roseanne series, um, but I have chosen Roseanne Deep Brown, which I th think is pretty much a classic with people who grow cut flowers, you know, on flower farms and stuff like that, because it's such a unique color and it's those coppery plummy colour with really ruffled blooms and then I'm also sewing Roseanne Clear Green which is a wonderful pistachio greeny colour and it's deeply layered and slightly ruffled and I can't wait for that one. So the important thing to know about Lysianthus is that they need light to germinate and that they're going to take five to six months from when you sew them to when you're going to get your blooms. So you really do need to get cracking on these. They are not frost tolerant, so you're also going to need to have a space where you can baby them. So you're gonna to have to keep them warm and frost free until after your last frost, and this is really important. They also need heat to germinate. So if you've got a nice warm radiator or heat mats preferably, then that is the best way to germinate them. You're also going to have to look out for things like fungus gnats and thrips and things like that. And you're also going to have to be really on it with potting the Lysianthus on. So in the beginning, they'll take anywhere from 10 to 20 days to germinate. Hopefully about the two week mark, everything should have germinated. And you do need to keep the seeds moist during this period. So warm and moist. So put a lid or cling wrap on top of them or something like that, but make sure they're warm and moist. And then when they've germinated, you want to let them dry out a little bit between waterings and you want to bottom water because they are going to be absolutely tiny. However, once they've got their fourth set of leaves, you do need to pot them on. And if you delay putting them on, it's really going to impact your plant growth. So there are a couple of things to look out for if you're growing Lysianthus, but they are so worth it because they're such beautiful flowers. So most Lysianthus come as pelleted seeds. There are a couple of things to note about the pelleted seeds. So the pelleted seed just means that the people who are selling the seed, I'd say manufacturer, but they don't manufacture the seeds, the growers who are selling the seed, um, they put a coating on the outside of the seed because it's so, so tiny. And this is really helpful, but it makes the seeds a bit more expensive. Now, there are a couple of things if you haven't used pelleted seeds to note. The first thing is that it's really, really easy to crush the coating on the seed with your fingers or in the packaging or anything like that. So you have to be really careful when you handle the pellets, because if you just squeeze just a bit too tightly, the coating will disintegrate and you won't be able to find the seed because the seed's so tiny. And so that's why most people who sell Lysianthus seeds pelleted will send them out in a little vial. And this protects the seeds from being crushed. And if they don't come in a vial, like I found with one of my packs this year, um, the seeds, are, the pellets are just all crushed in the packet. So I've got no idea where the seeds are. So I've just sprinkled the entire packet. The other thing with the pelleted seeds, not only is it quite easy to crush them if you don't handle them gently, but if you use like a, the toothpick method for sowing your seeds, this isn't going to work because a tiny bit of moisture like on a toothpick or on your hand, if your hand's a little bit sticky, is just going to make that coating disintegrate because it disintegrates really easily. So don't use the toothpick method, you know, a dab of water or anything to sow your pelleted seeds. Um, just try to pick each one up individually and plop it in its hole. And so when you're using the pelleted seed, you also need to make sure that it's damp when you sow it. So you should definitely bottom water because you don't want to dislodge any of those precious seeds, but you should also spray the surface. And if the surface of my compost looks dry at any point because it's on the heat mat, even though it's got a lid on, I will spray it every day. Like I will check them every day to make sure they're moist because you want that seed coating to disintegrate in order for the seed to germinate. 
and so you need to keep it moist. Because Lysianthus are going to be in the seed cells for such a long time, they are going to be more susceptible to having algae growth on the surface. So there are two things you can do. You could sprinkle some cinnamon on the soil surface because that supposedly has antibacterial properties. This hasn't been proven, although it's definitely a widespread theory. Um, or you could use vermiculite. The good thing about vermiculite is it's, it's, I think it comes from like a volcanic substance. And so the good thing about it is that it's very light, so it's not going to pack anything down and it is going to let light through. So even if you happen to drop a bit, bit of vermiculite on top of your seed, it will still germinate. So vermiculite is a good thing to use to stop the algae growth. I've sprayed the surface of the compost and you know dampened the seeds I'm still going to bottom water my trays to make sure the compost is thoroughly moistened and then I'm going to put them on the heat mats do let me know if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and um, if you have then please give it a like because that helps to tell YouTube you know to show it to other people who might enjoy the video and it really does help if you if you hit the like button and I would really appreciate it anyway I hope you have found it interesting and useful and do try to stay to the end if you can for my videos because quite often that's where I'll put the bloopers they're normally me just fudging words but sometimes there are garden mishaps and I will always put bloopers in if I think there's anything amusing um, anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time do you want an update on my amaryllis <laughs> I think they're amazing so super tall amaryllis this year planted these before Christmas I think I planted them in October probably and they're still flowering now at the end of January this is the second stalk on this particular plant so I've already had one stem there that had four flowers and I've chopped it off and this is the second lot of four flowers there's one just coming out there but how gorgeous are they also are going to be in these seed cells for so long they are going to be up susceptible <laughs> because lysianthus are going to be in the seed cells for so long they're going to see be be susceptible <laughs>